In this video, we build up the alien desert of 22ville, our custom Lego city project with a uniquely designed house for every series 22 CMS. This familiar looking crescent moon castle is the earthly home to the Night Protector. I am conflicted with this figure. It has so many amazing individual elements, like the transparent purple sword and shield, this moon print on the shield and the belt, really just phenomenal printing all around, and topped off with this new turquoise hair piece. All the individual parts are great, but on the whole, it just feels like this figure is lacking something. I don't know, something to make it stand out a bit more. Is that just me? Oh well, I guess that's our job now, building the figure a house that truly makes it stand out. To do that, we are gonna take heavy inspiration from this build here. Many of the houses in 22ville have been inspired by Minecraft or similar games, but this one will be specifically based on a build from one of my favorite Minecraft creators, B00100 or B-dubs. He recently premiered the third season of his single player world and will hopefully be starting season nine of Hermitcraft around the time this video gets uploaded as well. This masterpiece was his season eight starter base. <laughs> How? Starter base? As soon as I saw this moon-shaped logo, I knew I wanted to recreate something like this. Though not exactly copy it due to a couple of reasons. For one, you typically see b -dubs moon from this angle, a waxing crescent, but in our layout and to match the figure's logo, it makes a lot more sense for the moon to be mirrored or a waning crescent. Wow, eighth grade science class was useful after all. What do you know? Coincidentally, this will also make it more consistent with Marvel's Moon Knight logo, which I feel would have been a much better name for this figure than the kind of confusing Knight Protector. We'll get into all that a bit later. But anyways, the second big change we have to make is the color scheme. Beat Up's build is a beautiful combination of oranges and greens, but besides the fact that I have approximately zero of both those colors in Lego, I feel like it would match the figure a lot better to build a mostly gray moon with small accents of pink, purple, and turquoise. Even with this change, we're not looking too good in the light gray bricks department. Most of them are currently being used in this crassle up here. Unlike in Minecraft where you can always just gather more blocks, our two options are either to spend a lot of time and money buying from Bricklink or looks like the dragon got the last laugh after all. I feel kind of bad for destroying this after smack talking the roof last time, but it had to be done. And now we have ample material to work with. I don't want to build the structure directly on the desert floor, so let's terraform up this rock outcropping with the aid of these dark tan big ugly rock pieces. One of which I actually had to steal from our Looney Tunes display. We'll just leave this on the backside here as a bit of an Easter egg. And we'll place the foundation upon here instead. Kind of a weird angle to build and film at, and as always, I'm quickly running out of parts, so let's Let's call it here for now. I'll come back and add more detail when I tackle the rest of the desert landscape. I was really tempted to carve another train tunnel into the rock like I did with the frozen tower, but that was way too much of a hassle. Plus the train's actually got cargo now, so we probably don't want to obstruct its path any further. On top of the mound, we'll put the swivel plate because I want to have the whole moon structure stationed at an angle so you get the best view of it from all around. Speaking of round, I think the most difficult part will be getting the curvature of the crescent shape right. B-dubs makes it look trivial, but this initial mock-up I did is a little too C-shaped. It's almost like a minifigure hand. We could build an enormous thatch roof with this. I actually tried hopping onto the Hermitcraft World download to try to measure out some of these proportions in person, but I'm really bad at flying and creative, and it just wasn't quite the right scale for what I'm planning. I was at a loss for what to do, until one day, of all things, I was bored in data analytics class. We were working with Excel, so I whipped up this sketch. It gives us a surprisingly one-to-one -one blueprint to work with that's not too curvy, but just curvy enough with this pink accent to match the figure's torso, random purple details along the side, and some sort of tower protruding out the top. The initial brick-built outline based on it looks pretty good, if a bit flimsy. I think the C shape is fine, as long as we fill in the middle to make it seem more natural and sturdy. One thing that will definitely help is making the whole thing three-dimensional. I want to give it an interior after all, so it can't just be a cardboard cutout. The first floor will be some sort of a nursery, where the Night Protector keeps her new baby snail, who our livestream chat named Joe. The green goop in Joe's shell is very important, so we'll keep him nice and warm in this little incubator here. This computer is essentially a very high-tech baby monitor, and although I'm not going to worry too much about the walls, there's not enough room to make them double thick, let's try to make them a little less ugly. And with that, this is a nice cozy little spot to cuddle up and listen to a bedtime story or something. Building the middle floor was going a lot easier than the first 
first until I realized I had been completely sealing up the back with no access to the interior. Oops. Taking inspiration from a different hermit, I left the back unfinished, so now we have plenty of room to build floor two, the laboratory. This is where the Night Protector studies various artifacts as she tries to concoct an accelerated aging serum. She's been experimenting on the local wildlife. Some test subjects age too fast, others actually worked in reverse, and I'm sure they'll be fine, until arriving at the perfect formula. That's actually what Joe the Snail is being grown in downstairs. He should be reaching full maturity any minute now. Anyways, let's wrap up here, and after some more hard work, finally we got a moon. I actually remembered this time to leave an opening for the third and final floor, the bedroom. We've got a weird night light and a lime green bed for her to shriek in. There we go. Have a sweet dream. Works. B Dubs is constantly sleeping to keep the night away, but unfortunately, the night protector can't seem to doze off with the constant noise of speakers, crowds, trains, and a loot resonating late into the night. She tried using a white noise machine, which was a nightmare to install, and keeping her sword and shield close by, but ironically, the night protector hasn't been able to protect the peace and quiet of the night, no matter what she's tried so far. Let's try to eclipse some of these problems by giving the house's exterior another layer of detail. Literally. One of my favorite parts of B-Dubs' moon are these metal plates patching up the suggestion of rust and corrosion. And the reason I've been putting snot bricks all throughout the build was to do the same. Riveting, I know. Now it's time to smooth out the curvature big time with a ton of plates. It takes three Lego plates to equal a brick, opposed to Minecraft's two slabs, so we were able to cram a lot more detail here on a much smaller scale. The shaping is phenomenal now. However, I know I used bananas as a joke earlier, but the bottom point of our structure seems a bit droopy almost. Most. We can definitely fix that. Beautiful. That's no moon, but this sure is. It looks a lot less like a C or a banana and more like an actual moon or a telephone. Sorry, I have to take this. But now it's time for my absolute favorite part, greebling. I've prepared a ton of little bits and pieces of gray, purple, pink, and turquoise ahead of time. So we're able to go nuts on the greebling without stopping every five seconds to hunt down another part. Even so, I spent like an hour on this. May have gone a bit overboard with the level of detail, but I am over the moon with how it all looks. It definitely gives it a sci-fi vibe, so building up this more medieval style tower from the source material is definitely a juxtaposition, but a welcome one, I think. Then of course, we've got the iconic clock. I went way harder than I needed to on this design. After all the color combos I tried, it doesn't quite fit the theme, and I'm not sure YouTube will appreciate the competition right next door, but it's such a fun way to remind the protector of all the countless hours she lay sleeplessly awake at night. See, it's even suspended by little string. How, how nice. My original plan had this transparent umbrella piece acting as a big gem to match the figure's torso, but I realized it would be weird to have two round objects right next to each other that are the exact same size. Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, we're keeping that. It even helps fit the clock into the color scheme a bit more. Some more greebling on the top. I want to leave this inner surface plain so it doesn't all blend together. And let's call this build a day call it a night? Whatever, let's just add it into the city. The swivel platform works exactly as intended. You can even turn the whole thing around and access the interior. I couldn't decide if I wanted to go for a more traditional desert with cacti and tumbleweeds, or adding an extra S to that and making the foliage a lot crazier and more vibrant. These alien flora and fauna are unique. I just want to avoid it looking like I puked a bunch of random colors everywhere. We already have a lot going on here. So traditional desert, one out in the end and we still found ways to make some pretty unique cacti. And with that, this whole thing is looking absolutely... Oh, hey, sounds like Joe is all done, and he looks different. Guess you know which figure we'll be doing next time, but until then, I apologize for all the moon puns. Leave a like if you enjoyed this lunacy, and we'll see you in the next episode.